something like that is actually uh, infringing on God's world view or universal view. Does that make a sense? Well, I'm, I'm right. probably overreaching good, yeah. my intellect here. Um, how, is, how does that work out? It's a bit wishy-washy. Um, What's so, the main so, point? My main point is that if human beings come together and go, this is actually what is human and civilised, yeah. and that steps directly in the, on the toes yeah. of a particular religion, that any religion the again. Yeah. Pardon? Civilisation. Any particular religion, no, uh, Christian, Jewish, or... Um, Muslim, thank you, or any, any before that, and any other Christian, but those are the main ones because I live in the West, of course. Assyria. So, would they, would that human rights into uh, attempt to insert human rights into a culture and a civilization, yeah. would that be a massive threat to that particular because it is a threat to insult to be interpreted as yeah. because our my our God yeah. is superior and is always right, and how can human beings ever formulate a law independent? Yeah. There isn't going to be a conflict at any stage. Am I? Is, does that well, make yeah. sense? You could say our c- culture is collapsing now help because, we're, here. because we're getting I, too I, liberal. I, I, help we're me getting out, too, everyone. Like people, we're getting too so. soft. Sorry? I don't like interrupting people, so I just uh, have to stand back. So, so, what I think you're saying, mm-hmm. uh, if I understand correctly, is that, that I mean, you started off two points ago where you said that you, you asked whether or not human rights could be. I suppose a negative force to religion? Or to, yeah, potentially. To, to potentially. That's the question. Right. So, so, the answer to that, I would say that, that it depends on the religion. So, for example, when it comes to my religion, Judaism, so nowadays it probably wouldn't have any impact on us for a very simple reason. Because we, are, we do not have the legal authority under our own religious laws to do anything which we constantly kill human rights today. We're, we're not, we can't kill anyone today. We're not going to kill Amalekites because we don't know who they are. We can't have our courts enact a death penalty because we don't have a Sanhedrin. We're not allowed to have a Sanhedrin because, we're, because we don't have um, certain processes in the temple and those things that, that were necessary for such a thing to exist. Yeah. And therefore, we can't be in back at the moment. We have to wait till the Messiah comes in order to, to bring this stuff. And uh, so that wouldn't, so that would not have anything to do with us. Now, with regards to other religions, it might be a bit, a, a, bit, a bit different. Of course, religions that don't have a concept of laws changing based on exile, okay, like, for example, Islam and Christianity, um, so that might be a little bit different because, because they don't have such a concept that you change, that, that, that the laws have different applications depending on where you are. So some, for example, some of the more fundamentalist forms of, um, of, of Sufi, uh, of, the, of the Sufi branch of, uh, of, of Sunni Islam, um, could, um, some of these more uh, modern revisionists who want to um, remake the original type of caliphate, right, which gives, gives way to organizations like Al-Qaeda, for example. Um, so for them, it would be much more, um, much more, ch- that kind of um, belief system is much more challenged by the idea of human rights because what they see as their absolute truth goes against human rights because that's what, that's what they believe. Um, as I say, it wouldn't affect us, it could affect them. And in terms of Christians, I don't know if Christianity really has a thing of killing people in, in the, on the outset. Yes, a lot of Christians did kill people over the years, like the Crusaders, but that was really in certain circumstances where popes were in favour of doing certain things and we haven't really said anything, uh, they haven't really done any of this stuff in a very long time, so I don't think it would really be an issue. We were hanging, in, hanging people to quite recently, yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, uh, Christianity uh, glorifies killing people in the name of God. That is an absolutely the truth. The college, which, which, which who, groups? Catholicism, who? Orthodoxy, Protestantism? The, um, the, uh, the religious groups are in charge in this country. Christian Church of England. And Church of England. Is, well, we don't even have the death penalty in this country. Until very recently. Yeah, so that's, that's the so stop point. And Christian. that's because what I was talking about earlier is when people think actually killing in the name of God isn't something that. It's moved. Well, it's it's moved into the shelter. Under which, the arch. Which is something of. 
<laughs> which is what a space civilization should be uh, doing and in uh, normalizing killing people and I think this is and then we've got the Crusades yes and the Crusades in the Muslim Life countries Ah, uh, the Iraq War, World War II, the value of life these were religious wars. So even to modern day yeah. uh, history, these are religious wars, which all the religions contributed to, by the way, in World War II. But uh, the Iraq War was just wholly a Christian, potentially wholly a Christian. No. Actually, now I've said that, I might not. Tony Blair converted to Catholicism after. Exactly. Because he was guilty as hell. They thought that killing a certain religion en masse was justified because yeah. their religion and the way that religion is constructed when you're a child and educated as a child, yeah. they normalise yeah. this mass killing because the profits, not just profit in money, I mean profits for your faith and your afterlife experience would be gross in the extreme for the gross thing complete and that. That's so there is still today this in the Christian um, construct this idea that murder is justified and brilliant. It makes your place in heaven because this is a lot about to do with heaven and the construct of heaven. If you do a certain act like Tony Blair, murder how many Muslims now have been murdered in Iraq? Anyone know? In excess of hundreds of thousands. Oh, Muslims, right? So that certifies, that Not inserts someone like Tony Blair placed into heaven as pretty high yeah, but up it's the noble. Sunni and the Shiites fighting each other, isn't it? Anyone disagree with that? Um, right? Like it was Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland killing each other. The more you kill, the higher the place same, you get. But they believe the same thing. Yeah, they're, they're constructs of heaven. So it shows you that humans. What I'm proposing the closer here, by they the way, agree, the more they hate each other. Uh, that's a great profit for people like Tony Blair. What I'm proposing here is heaven is a political construct, by the way. That's what I'm saying. Christian heaven, that is, is a political construct. And if you perform certain actions, you end up in a certain position and with X amount of slaves. Christians have one obsession with slaves and taking them to heaven with them. Don't ask me about why. And you'll have to talk to Britain about that. Just, 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 uh, just, 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 I don't see Protestants believing that. that. I've not met Catholics who believe that. I've yes. not met Muslims who believe that. The people Focus who faith. follow these faiths mm -hmm. are very different from the people in charge of these faiths. Well, first of all, there's no there's no one in charge of the Protestant faith because Protestantism is by nature decentralised. When it comes to Catholicism, so the Pope the nowadays is a, is is um, much more liberal than Pope's before him. And um, he hasn't said anything in favour of slavery or in favour of killing people. Um, in terms of orthodox, so it depends on the specific the specific patriarch within the dominion of the Eastern Orthodox Church or the, the Eastern Orthodox Church or the Syrian Church of the East, like whichever one. And unless you bring me some sort of example of one of these modern day patriarchs who are in charge of their specific churches around the world, um, um, actually um, saying something like what you're saying, then I would say it probably doesn't exist today. And there are other churches as well. You could bring the example of Methodist Presbyterians, but once again, I don't think any of those churches have a centralised leadership either. I don't know how it works with the, with the Mormons, or even if they should be considered Christians or not, and they think that the Christians um, the, uh, the, uh, the witnesses. So, but once again, I mean, for example, the witnesses, they don't need, they, 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 they definitely don't believe that they kill people. So these are Bible-believing Christians. They have different interpretations of things, of uh, how far you should take church traditions and things like that. Things like that. Helpful, and, uh, you put them down there. Not the Pope Thank you. Or whether Thank or not you. you should have, um, whether yeah. or not you should have um, a centralisation of power. But I, unless you could bring specific examples. Of, um, of, of people advocating slavery or death, even yeah. advocating them just being on the side of death, death penalty or on the side Maybe. of slavery, then, uh, then we wouldn't have to say.